Hello again, everyone. Zack Attack is here with my TD Impact Wrestling review for tonight. 1 3 13. Of course, the first impact of 2013. Of course, we saw the winner of the Wrestle of the Year, which kicked off tonight's impact. Plus, we saw the return of Sting. We saw Hogan conflict his daughter, uh, confront his daughter and her alleged boy toy, Billy Red. And another member of ac gets unmasked as a new member, apparently, is Crown. Uh, aside from that, my thoughts on tonight's impact. It was okay to kick off the year. You know, we have the Genesis main event announced, which I fully predicted on my attack letter day. And also last week, during the impact review, I was fully right on the main event, which I'll get to that in a moment. That's how we kicked it off, the announcement of that main event. A couple of the scenarios going into it, of course, like I said, a big return of, a, of Sting tonight. So, a uh, decent impact to kick off the year, which kicked off, of course, with the reveal of the winner of the Superstar of the Year, Paul. The nominees were Austin Aries, who had a terrific year in TNA last year, being, of course, the TNA World Champion, following a huge win as Exhibition Champion, giving it up, of course, making the new world that around Destination X, the Exhibition Champion, will be able to sacrifice the Exhibition Championship for a title shot like Austin did. Of course, Bobby Roode was also nominated. Big champion last year, longest reigning TNA champion in years. Bully Ray also nominated, despite his problems with Hogan, he was nominated. Also, James Storm was nominated, dominated the Battle for Glory series, but the Battle for Glory series winner and the TNA World Champion was also nominated, Jeff Hardy. And I predicted on the attack line, and I knew it was going to be this case that Jeff Hardy, yes, was voted as a superstar of the year. Much to the chagrin of Austin Aries and Bobby Roode, as Hardy was accepting his award. Both Austin Aries and Root pleaded both their cases on why they, each of them, should have been the TNA Superstar of the Year. If Austin was still a bad, uh, good guy, he would have won. But of course, they like the superstar baby faces like Hardy. So, Hardy had a great year, kind of a rough year. 2011, kind of a rough patch for him, getting fucked up a lot. But he didn't came back strong this past year. And of course, the BFG series get the title. And of course, we revealed the main event of Genesis, like I mentioned, and I predicted it right off the money last week. And I was right. Indeed, it will be a triple threat match for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. It will be Jeff Hardy defending against Bobby Roode and Austin Aries. Knew that was coming. I said it last week, and I said it on the attack, and I knew there would be a triple threat made for that pay per view involving these three guys. And as Hardy declared it, both Austin Aries and Bobby both double teamed on Hardy. The woman simply beat him down and then each of them got a shot in. Of course, both their egos clash as Hardy got the last word by delivering the twist of fate on the Bobby Wood, clearing them both out of the ring. As the trophy got broken, as Hardy was going to get nailed with it by Wood and Aries, but that, that's when Hardy docked it and, of course, delivered the twist of fate on Bobby Wood. Of course, Hardy sending a message to now his two challengers. For Genesis, which will take place on, of course, January the 13th. So, uh, there you go. Jeff Hardy, Superstar of the Year, and now just the Genesis main event, which I kind of predicted. He will defend the title, Hardy will, against Aries and Wood in a triple threat. I knew that was coming, like I mentioned. Now, on to our next match, kind of an impromptu match. James Storm was, of course, moping around backstage after losing the Superstar of the Year award. And his feud with Kaz and Daniels kind of continued on as Kaz and Daniels made fun of him for losing. And of course, Storm made one new resolution to kick ass everywhere. Made some cool little internet jokes, but like, I'm trying to think of the whole thing like, uh, I'll tread on my beat down and I'll beat your Facebook. Or whatever he meant to say, but involving Twitter and Facebook and Instagram too. They said, after that, after those jokes, Kaz and Daniels said, you forgot MySpace. Well... Everybody else has forgotten my space. Anyway, with that little backstage conflict, that one on 12 first match in a puppy matchup involving James Storm and, well, Kaz. After a fake move, Daniels kind of uh, came in first, but he kind of distracted Storm as Kaz came from behind, as Kaz was made opponent. And Daniels got way more involved in this matchup. It was a decent matchup for what a decent open up first match of Impact 2013 was a decent one, despite. Numerous interferences, numerous distractions from 
Daniels getting way involved, tripping Storm a lot, distracting referee, distracting Storm. Despite all that, Storm did again get the victory, following another big closing call move, kind of a backstabber, but the foot way, uh, instead of backwards, he does it to the, you know what I mean. Uh, anyway, uh, delivered a nice little last call super kick as De uh, Cash was trying to fight off Storm. He came up the top rope and got the last call super kick in the air. Kind of like what Orton does with the RKO sometimes. Delivers the RKO in the air. Well, Storm can deliver the last call in midair. One, two, three, victory for James Storm despite numerous distractions from Daniels. The other half, a bad influence. When it comes to Storm in 2013, Storm may have a good 2013. He had a decent 2012. Well, first half of 2012 kind of sucked it with his feud with Wood culminating with his loss at lockdown. And of course, Storm came back, dominated the BFG series a Terry loss. Thanks to any fans from Bobby Wood. So I hope Wood, I mean, I hope Storm has a decent 2013 this year. Especially since he's the one that kind of cost AJ a shot at the title for about a, for until this year's Bound for Glory. Of course, AJ still out. I don't know when AJ will come back here or not. We'll see what's up with AJ. Hopefully, soon, maybe make a return at lockdown. Who knows what's up with the AJ situation. With him locking out recently. So there you go. Storm defeats Gaz. Despite the distractions from Daniels. <laughs> now on to our next segment. Involving of course Ace and Ace. First off of course. Which we saw last week. They were trying to recruit Mr. Anderson. Because Anderson wanted time to join Ace and Ace. I mentioned it last week. The last time that Mr. Anderson was in a click. Well he was in a mortal for like. For like two weeks because he turned his back on Immortal within a short time. See what happens with Ace and Ace. Apparently, from what he's giving hints for, especially hinting towards attacking Sting for his comeback tonight, apparently Anderson is in Ace and Ace. Kind of like it's not like somewhat official yet, but apparently Anderson is in Ace and Ace. But we'll see if it'll be really official about Anderson, and Ace and Ace or not. Probably next week. But after that little backstage segment about Ace and Ace. Doc came out, of course, Sting said in his videos that the first man he was going to attack when he comes back is Doc. And of course, Doc came out saying, Sting, girl, come out, come out, wherever you are. Of course, Sting wasn't going to come out that early. He did drop a little hint. He dropped the baseball bat from the air. Well, some probably some guy in the, some guy up in the Raptors kind of dropped the baseball bat, kind of giving Doc the illusion that Sting's up in the Raptors. Like, Sting, where you at? Come on down. And uh, that bad was actually about that Diva was looking for backstage. If you saw the end of the segment with Mr. Anderson saying whether or not he'll be at Ace and Ace or not, you saw Diva was like, "Where's my bat?" Well, the bat was found by Sting. Sting grabbed, must have grabbed the bat or the, you know, backstage guy to give the illusion that Sting grabbed it. Cause that's what happened in the ring. Doc calling out Sting, Sting or someone in the back dropped the bat to allude that Sting's at the in the house in the Raptors at least. And of course, Sting will indeed make his return. Later on in the evening, and with our big main event happening tonight, the big steel cage tag involving two members of Ace and Ace against Angle and Joe, would we'll see if Sting would get involved in that main event, which I predicted he would, and well, we'll see what happens. On our next match, finally after a long time, we got our second matchup, the first match of the X Division Tournament. Of course, the first match was Christian York dunking on Kid Cash, the winner of that match, will take on the winner of next week's match, Zima Ion versus Kenny King at Genesis. And winner of that match will get a shot against RVD that night at Genesis. So, this for an exhibition title shot. And of course, I predict that Kenny King, he's a little egomaniac now. You can see his ego rise above everybody. And despite Zima's big ego as much as Kenny's, I predict Kenny King will be. Defeating Zima Iron next week to take on the winner of this match, which ended up being a Christian York defeating Kip Cash in a decent back and forth exhibition matchup. Of course, Christian York is an up and coming rising star from the Gut Check series. Decent showing against Jeff Hardy a few weeks ago. Last week, he delivered a great matchup against RVD. RVD calling out Christian York to the dismay of Kenny King, which could be very good for a setup for a possible York Kenny King matchup if King does end up defeating. Zima. But after that decent showing last week of York almost getting the victory over the exhibition champion in a non-title match, Christian York gets a decent victory with his finishing move. 
I don't know what it's called, his finish of a kick ass, but uh, the mood swing as he calls it. But he delivered that and gets the victory over Kit Cash. He's a high flying matchup. A little back and forth action, very exciting matchup. Christian was a little slow in there, but I think Christian, I've said it before about him last couple weeks that Christian York's got a lot of potential. And we'll see what he can do in the finals as of course, like I said, he advances to the X Division tournament final. And we'll face the winner of the Zima Iron Kitty King match from Nick that will happen next week at Genesis. And of course, winner of the tournament will face RVD at Genesis for the tournament final, also at the pay per view. So there you go, Christian York advances to the finals of the X Division Championship Tournament in a decent showing against the veteran known as Kid Cash, who gave us all, but indeed Christian York, the newbie, gets it in. So there you go. Now on to our next matchup, which is indeed about uh, Hernandez taking on Joey Ryan, with of course Chavo Guerrero and Matt Morgan, their partners, at ringside watching their backs. Morgan apparently got injured in his arm in a sling. It'll be fine by Genesis. Apparently, Joy Ryan and Morgan will get another shot against Hernandez and Chavo at the pay per view. It was kind of a weird, silly matchup. It was a very short matchup. Of course, Hernandez was beating the crap out of Joy Ryan. As Joy Ryan was getting his butt whipped, Matt Morgan came in, took his arm out of his sling, apparently faking the injury. It beat the crap out of Hernandez, causing a disqualification. Chavo came in too, but he got a common footprint for his helping. As Matt Morgan and Joy Ryan stand tall, stood tall above the tag team champions, ready to send a message to him for the upcoming title match, the title rematch at Genesis. So there you go, kind of a stupid matchup, but kind of building up towards the matchup at Genesis now. We got the tag team title match apparently against Chavo and Hernandez, defending against Morgan and Joey Ryan, the biggest juice bag in TNA besides Robbie E. So there you go. And then this was for DQ, but Ryan and Morgan stand tall. Now, on with our next little segment. Which involved Hulk Hogan. But first off, we saw Kurt Angle in the back talking about Briscoe and Garrett Bischoff staying out, staying back from the Taylor Cage match. With Morgan, uh, Joe and Angle against Ace and Eight, you know, the need Briscoe and Garrett coming up to help. And, Garrett, and Angle had a New Year's resolution of his own to take, to unmask every one of those sons of bitches of Ace and Eight. They have masks on left because Doc and Devon were the only unmasked people. So Angle wants to unmask everybody. Well, we would see if Angle would accomplish that later on in the evening. Now, till then, on the next segment involving, like I said, Hulk Hogan. Now, of course, as we saw two weeks ago, the whole Bully Ray, Hulk Hogan, Hulk Hogan situation got way out of hand, spoiled, spiraled, out of control, as Hogan caught Book and Bully playing a little tonsil hockey, making out outside of Book's call. Hogan, of course, Hulk did not show up in Impact last week. He apologized for that to the fans, and of course, called both Book and Bully Ray out. Of course, Hogan saying to Bully, Bully Ray, you say, respect me and all, blah, 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 blah. I don't respect you now because you broke the code. There's a code of ethics in wrestling. You don't hide anything from the brotherhood, as they call it. Blah, 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 blah. And Bully Ray kind of admitted that, yes, I broke the brotherhood. I broke the code, basically, that I should have came clean about this whole thing with me and Brooke. Well, Hogan, as we're talking about separating personal business from business business, well, his personal business has become his professional business as he has suspended Bully Ray without pay immediately. So, we'll see how long this suspension will last with Bully Ray. I bet you Bully Ray will probably appear on Impact somehow next week in a video segment or something. And maybe get involved in Genesis. But till then, Hulk Hogan in a fist of rage following this whole thing of Bull Hogan and Bully Ray hiding their relationship from him. Bully Ray gets suspended for it. And Brooke was, of course, distraught, too. And Hogan talked her down, too. So, we'll see how this ongoing situation develops with this whole Bully Ray now getting suspended thing. And I wonder how long that will last. So, let's we'll see what happens in this scenario. Now, after that, on with our next matchup, a knockouts tag match. Very long one, but a decent tag match between Taylor teaming up with Gail Chemicals and the Knockouts Champion taking on 
Miss Tasmacher, and Nikki James. I was a little disappointed that Velvet wasn't on Impact tonight. We only seen Velvet once wrestle since her comeback against Madison Wade a few weeks ago. Hopefully we'll see more matches involving Velvet being back in the saddle. But till then, this decent tag match with Tara and Gale against Tasmacher and Mickey was decent. Mickey and Tasmacher came out the gate attacking Tara and Gale. But with little help from Jesse, not being as much of a pain in the ass as he usually is, got a little involved taking Tara out of every situation as Tara and Gale later gained the advantage, beating the crap out of Tasmacher for most of the matchup, following the early advantage for Gale, I mean for Tasmacher and Mickey. But after the hot tag from Tasmacher, it was all over but the crying as Mickey dominated the matchup, double beating the crap out of both Tara and Gale. And then with Tasmacher tucking up the top rope, landing on Tara and Jesse. And with them out of the way, Mickey took care of Gale, delivering the Mickey DDT and a 1 2 3 victory for Mickey and Miss Tasmacher, both delivering a message to Brooke Hogan about who Brooke should choose for the next TNA Knockouts number one contender for the Knockouts title. But with this whole bully Hulk Hogan, Brooke they boiling out of control. Will book focus on her own business or focus on her own personal issues with her father and her storyline boyfriend, Bully Ray. But till then, Mickey and Ted Michael gets the victory in a decent knockout tag. Speaking of tag match, up with our main event, which was a Steel Cage knockout, Steel Cage tag match. There's a Steel Cage knockout. Well, there's been Steel Cage knockout matches in the past, but not Steel Cage knockout tag. But here we go. Steel Cage tag match. Main event. Kurt Angle. Team up some more Joe against Devon and a masked man of Ace and Eights. Who, uh, well, should I even spoil it? But anyway, uh, it was actually a handicap match for the early going of the matchup as Angle was arriving in the ring. Don came out from the back, rammed the door against Angle, and locked Angle out of the ring. So basically, it was a handicap match for the early portion of the match as Joe. Went alone against Devon and the other mass member of Ace and Ace. Despite the numbers game, and of course, both members, Devon and the mass man, having their way with Joe in this decent, okay main event, pretty violent matchup. Joe indeed held his own until Kurt Angle finally got in, following another attack from Doc. As Angle was trying to do anything and everything to get in the ring, break the lock, and even climbing in from the, t from the bottom, like climbing into it. Like scaling the cage, tried everything he can as he was scaling it. Doc did come out, like I said again, attacked Ango, but Ango got the best of him, getting the key from Doc and unlocking the cage, which opened up the cage, but unfortunately didn't close it back up, which would harm Ango later on. So Ango got back in, un unlocked the cage, and dominated, came in like a house of fire. Until, of course, Doc got back up and rammed the cage door against Ango, making it bleed. It seemed like the Ace and Ace was going to get the victory after all after Doc got Ingo down again. But Ingo and Joe came back up after a miss of a splash by Devon. Ingo came back with the three suplexes. And of course got the big Ingo slam and the big one, two, three victory. On the best man for the win as Joe and Ingo celebrated in a pretty vicious, decent, brutal tag match. I've said this before, when there's one or two members of ac and in the ring, you better be sure that the other members won't be far behind, and indeed that's what happened. Since the ac and members, the rest of them were locked out, they came out following the match since they were no longer locked out, so the door was open, so there we go, that's how we end, that's how the match, after the match, here comes the other ac and members, being like a quadruple team, all over Ingo and Joe, as Mr. Anderson, Watch from the outside. And I knew this would happen. Coming back to help out, here comes Sting. Following the beatdown, here comes Sting, like I said, wearing the baseball back, attacking everybody and anything in his path. Being the crap out of Ace and Ace, scaling him out of the ring. Besides one member, a masked member got in there. And Sting took him down, and Ingo tried to take his mask off early on during the match. But Ingo got the mask off. Yes, another member of Ace and Eights loses his mask tonight. Despite Ace and Eights' best efforts to keep everyone still masked. But the guy who they did unmask 
was to TNA's Mike Tanay and Taz said, the guy formerly known as Mike Knox. I haven't noticed him because he, I kind of see, see the resemblance because Mike Knox had that long, that the hair, he's bald now, but I can tell from that long beard that it was Mike Knox, so that's what happened tonight. Joe and Ingo get the victory over Ace and Ace. Sting returns to help him out after a post-match attack. And another member of Ace and Ace is unmasked to be the former man known as Mike Knox, formerly of WWE. He might have a new name now, like Doc, a.k.a. Festus, a.k.a. Luke Gallows. So we'll see what the, the man formerly known as Mike Knox's TNA name is probably next week as Ace and Ace tries to come back from this sneak attack. Again, from Sting coming back, and of course Sting is still citing revenge on his mind. He got a taste of it tonight, but Sting's revenge ain't paid in full yet. So there you go, that's how we end the first impact of 2013. Of course, the struggle between Ace and Ace and the rest of the TNA roster continues on into 2013. We'll see how it ends, and when it'll end, the struggle. And will Anderson officially join next week? We'll find that out. And of course, besides that, next week, we got, of course, the second match of the X Division final uh, tournament with Zima Iron hanging on Kenny King, winner takes on Christian York at Genesis. And of course, we know now tag team title match of Genesis, Hernandez and Morgan against uh, Hernandez and Chavo against Morgan and Joy Wyatt, and Jeff Hardy and Triple Threat against Bobby Roode and Austin Aries. That is it for my TNA Impact review for tonight. See you all later. Thank you all very much for watching. With that in mind, you've been attacked by the review from Zach. Thanks again. See you later. Yeah, yeah. Happy New Year again, everybody. Happy 2013.